Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosnan of Steve Brosnan's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde JKL. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand and watercolor, tin and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And here we are once again. This is Monday, March the 30th, 2020. This is Clyde J. Kale, and you are listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, Episode 40. I'm here with my two best artist friends, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. And we have a guest artist, a returning guest artist, Kelly Folsom. Hello, folks. How you doing, Diane? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Constance? <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to Podcast 40. <laughs> and hello, Kelly. Welcome back. Uh, thank you, Clyde. I'm happy to be here with all of you. Yes, and I hope everybody has been safe and all your families are safe, you know, when these trying times. And like we were saying before we started recording up, thank God for the Internet. We can still <laughs> interact and uh, feel uh, feel like humans, you know, not uh, be so hunkered down in, in our isolated world. This week's theme was uh, the art business art practice, artist studio practice, you know, and uh, having Kelly here is excellent because Kelly is a premier expert at art business practice. Right, Kelly? (laughs) Sure. Why not? (laughs) (laughs) Some of the recommended videos was uh, referring to, you know, to that. Uh, We had a, uh, I recommended a uh, uh, Paul Klein's artist works uh, interview with uh, uh, Allison B. B. Stanfield, who is a uh, art coach, art consultant, uh, art artist uh, mentor, and she brought up some uh, some interesting points that concerning uh, artists uh, practice, the artist practice and everything. Diane, did you get a chance to watch that video, a little bit of it? I saw some of it, um, but I, I really didn't get a chance to listen to all of it. Um, and I listened to it in the past, but I'm trying to remember what she talked about. Uh, talk about somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't see enough of it to talk about it, really. Uh, Kelly, whenever when I say art business practice or art career practice, what what comes to your mind, or what what do you uh, you know? I know you're a coach and a mentor, and so what are some of the things that you uh, try to point out to uh, artists, and try to teach artists? In terms of art business? Art business or an art business practice? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it is very much a practice, number one. And I think uh, I think the biggest hurdle for us as artists, is speaking as one and having been in this position before, is there's kind of this um, disconnect. You know, we tend to first focus so much on our technique 
and getting better as an artist and really working on our craft and our artwork and and we are like willing to invest as much time and as much money into that as it takes right to get to where we want to get um, I know I was certainly in that position that was my number one priority as it should have been um, but once I got got to that point then became the issue of okay well now you know I'm good enough at what I do and now how do I make a living at it <laughs> and I know myself as an artist and having having had so many art friends um, art students you know the art business side is such a hang-up for so many of us um, because you know the things that I said all the time is I just want to paint I just want to paint you know um, and I've heard so many other friends and students say the exact same thing to me um, and it totally makes sense obviously yeah we just want to paint or we just want to create um, but unfortunately it's this other side of well you know you can just create and just paint but that doesn't mean that you're entitled to be a successful artist financially or to run a successful art business and so what I've had to learn over the last few years especially is that that takes just as much investment both with the time and energy and also uh, financial investment as well to get the tools that you need to get better at that craft at, at the business craft versus the technical craft and I think um, once you kind of make that choice and you kind of identify what your priorities are and what you want out of that uh, then you're more willing to uh, see it as an investment and see it as a practice and and really see it um, from the same eyes that you saw looking at your art art practice through and developing your craft through you know that does make it a little bit easier if you can really see it through those eyes and make that commitment um, because it is a commitment and it takes a long time to develop just like developing your artistic skills absolutely a commitment that was uh, one of the things that uh, the Allison uh, Stanfield talked about was a making the commitment you have to decide you have to look into yourself you have to decide do I really want an art career am I willing to put the time in you know many artists they spend years developing their craft developing their skills but then the business they fall short of the business side and something that uh, she that struck with me she had mentioned that uh, different times when she uh, has artists who approach her for coaching after talking with them she'll determine that maybe you're not serious about it and she'll actually turn them down because you have to be willing to make make that commitment you know and uh, that is so important uh, I've ran across different artists you know that uh, they complain you know well, I've been doing this for 15 years and I haven't made any progress and the the point is after talking with them well they don't spend enough time, they're not willing to make that commitment you know to uh uh put that time in to do that marketing and everything i think uh diane constantly remember paul klein in his course he talked about he said it's basically it's like uh you know 50 30 you know 50 percent working on your art 30 percent working on marketing and, and the and the other side of, of the story, you know, and everything. And Diane, you got anything to add? You, know, you want to add to this? Yeah, I think um, part of the problem is like well, I'm gonna, when I went to college, they didn't teach us anything about running a business, nothing whatsoever. <laughs> and you you learned all the technique, you know, how to apply paint and how to do the different crafts and stuff, but they didn't teach you anything at all about going to galleries, any nothing. There was nothing. You were just on your own all of a sudden when you were when you graduated, and so everybody has to kind of. They're, we're all on different paths, like how how to get from where we are to where we want to be, and they're not necessarily in the same places. So it's so hard to get advice on what you need to do for yourself to get, you know, to be at a point where you can that you're making money with your art. 
it's oh, it's such an individual thing, and that's just complicates it because <laughs> you can't like follow somebody else's you know ten steps to get there. It's like you have to just fumble and you know get your own way through it. So it does make it really difficult. Mm -hmm. Constance, you want to you want to add anything or? I think Diane pretty much said all the important things about <laughs> it takes it takes forever to actually you know you you've got to find your own way through it. I mean, you can read books on people who have gotten there, which is helpful, but um, and then you've just got to figure out how to get there yourself on your you know with yourself. So. Well, I think too that it gets hard because. Um, you get a lot of disappointments. You get rejected from shows you apply to. You don't get in everything that you know, and you, you don't sell everything you make. And so there's like a lot of negative things that keep hitting you, and you have to be pretty resilient and um, you know just keep working at it and um, not let that stuff you know knock you off the course. You have to keep putting one foot in front of the other, otherwise you know you give up and. Yep. Or you know it's not happening <laughs> let me add it i'll edit this out but i apologize for this noise i think it's my internet that's causing the noise because like i said when they when it went down and then when they restart when i did a video call with my daughter i had a lot of this noise too so with my apologies uh but i personally i think it's my internet connection is doing this or my or my computer they updated my computer also you know microsoft's always you know updates so Try to ignore it and keep on going. <laughs> yes, Diane, uh, that's the, the commitment part. Ah, so many times I've listened to also, there are so many different coaches out there. I think it's great that there are so many different artist coaches because you get a different perspective. Like listening to Kelly, the last time you were here and, and when you talk, what you talked about. Uh, your course and everything and 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 now you have a completely different perspective from some of the other folks it's a lot of it's the same information but it's presented differently and i think it resonates with different artists you know differently and uh maybe you can jump in and add some more kelly of, of what you kind of you know teach in, in, in your in your courses Oh, when I teach in my courses. Uh, well, first, yeah, on that, on first, I'd like to address what Diane said about, um, you know, about that they don't teach you in art school about how to uh, make a living as an artist or uh, the financial piece, you know, the entrepreneurial piece, which is really what we are. I mean, we you could say we're solopreneurs. Um, some of us are more entrepreneurs, but they don't teach us that and so it's no wonder it's no surprise that we get out and we're just like what you know <laughs> now what <laughs> now what you know and i know for me we have one career development class one semester at the school i went to so you know in the end you know i spent a hundred thousand dollars to invest in my technical skill set as an artist but I got one semester of career development in which to have some education there in order to pay back, you know, the debt that I owed for my technical skill, you know. Um, and we're also in a really interesting time period where a lot of things have changed and the gallery systems are changing a lot, you know, with the advent of, you know, the invention of social media and all of that it's like the gallery system i've seen a huge shift there just since getting out of art school in 2011. um so and then of course just the cultural and societal you know beliefs that we learn as artists going all the way back to van gogh you know <laughs> the starving artist and um so a lot of that stuff is just passed down some of it is is ignorance of the changes i i certainly know whenever i went to art school, I just had no clue, you know, what do you do to make a living as an artist? And, and I could only see what other people were doing and kind of get an outside view of that. Um, so of course, all the professors at the school wanted you to go get your master's degree so you can become a professor. And that's how you make a living as an artist, you know, <laughs> because that was how they made a living 
as an artist, you know. Um, but that was definitely not going to be the path for me, and I did know that. So I would see other artists, and I would, okay, they're in galleries, they're entering shows, you know, this, uh, they're teaching, you know. So that's all I knew to do is to look at other people, other artists who I, I assumed was making a living, but then once I got to know other artists, I would find Mm -hmm. out, oh, they were really struggling financially. You know, they're working part-time jobs to, or even full-time jobs sometimes to pay their bills and really doing their art on on the side. And so that's kind of how I got started as an artist making a living. And it did, you know, it worked for a while and it worked up up to a certain point, you know. So let's say, you know, really, really shucking and jiving, you know, on the daily, (laughs) Mm -hmm. maybe at best with with teaching and and being in eight different galleries across the country, um, you know, entering shows, just basically where can I sell a painting and when can I sell a painting? Hopefully, oh my gosh, fingers crossed, I'll sell a painting at this show or at this gallery event and um at best at maybe the maximum i may have been making fifty thousand dollars a year gross you know and then you know how much it costs to be an artist and you know and to go do these shows you've got to pay however much to go do these shows you've got to pay for shipping to the galleries you got to pay for framing your supplies you know your studio you you know just so much cost so After about seven years of doing that, and I actually started to see my income decrease because the change in the gallery system was occurring, you know, um, paintings weren't selling, you know, in galleries. And and from what I understand, they're they're still having a hard time selling. Um, So the good news is, you know, so... The good news is we're living in such a time that there's so many different ways to do this. There's so many different paths and different options. And we're in the information age, right? So (laughs) there's so much information that we can get our hands on. Uh, Different coaches, like you said, that we can work with. Um, There's so many solutions and so many ways that we can adapt you know, to the situation to make it work. But you've got to be willing to do that. And, of course, that takes some digging and it takes some trying of things. Um, it's certainly not a will-come, you know, situation, which is, you know, probably why most small businesses fail because they think, and I still see a lot of artists do this, where I've got this great idea and they they invest all this time and energy in their in their course or in their whatever the idea is, um, and then they launch it and they don't get the return on investment they thought they were going to get. Well, see there, that was one more thing that didn't work and I'm going to give up and I'm super frustrated and all that good stuff, you know, so, but so you can't just give up and you also have to play smart, you know, and you have to arm yourself with uh, education and, and the information that you need to succeed. Um, but there's, so, you know, it, it is, a, it's a difficult path, you know, it, it's not easy. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> you know, uh, it, it can be very difficult. So. Yeah. It's very interesting. You, yeah, you said that because there's also, I've ran across, I've read mm-hmm. comments on Facebook and social media places from some artists who, uh, you know, they reply to other artists that they see appear to be successful. Oh, you've got it so easy. Oh, you knew so and so, or you knew this this important person. Or how can I get a hold of this this curator? Or how can I get in contact with this gallery owner? Thinking that okay, that's the key. That's going to get. But no, it's not because you still have to put in the work. Uh, there's a fellow that we uh, frequently follow, uh, Gary Benerchek. I don't know if you've ever heard, ever heard of him. And yes, he has a uh, salty language, but the point, <laughs> I like salty language. Yeah, his yeah, his New Jersey. Yeah, his new. He call I call him a new New Jersey language. But <laughs> the things he pushes is so it's so important. He says, "Okay, you're sitting. You hate your job. You're complaining about your your life. But then what do you do? You sit and 
spend five hours watching Netflix and playing video games. He said, between, you know, five o'clock in the evening and one o'clock in the morning, you could be doing this. You could be posting on Facebook. You could be pursuing you know, your dream. He said, you know, his emphasis is get up off your butt and do something. He said, no one is going to give it to you. And I think that is such, sometimes artists need a slap in the face. You know, that, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think at times there was just an enormous amount of entitlement in the situation for, for some people. Like, oh, I, I, I invested in my craft. I should just automatically, you know, be raking in the dough or, you know, getting the accolades or things should be working out for me. You know? So part of it is a sense of entitlement. And yes, I'm, I'm a huge advocate of taking action. And I love Gary Vaynerchuk for that reason. It is kind of like, okay, yeah, uh, stop making excuses, stop being a victim and, you know, take the situation into your own hands. You don't really have any other choice. You know, you could either remain a victim and make yourself miserable and everybody else miserable around you, you know, or you can do something about it. Now, on the other hand, I'm also not a believer in because I, I did. I was always a very hard worker and I was always like, I will say yes to anything and I will show up and I will work my butt off, you know, and um, and that comes from. My upbringing, you know, sort of a middle class, like labor uh, oriented family. And uh, that is one thing I'm grateful to them for, for my, to my parents for. It was instilling a really good work ethic. But there's also this other side where you, you can't always work your way out of the problem. You know, you sometimes have to uh, smart your way out of the problem. You know, you've got to get somebody who knows better than you in some cases, like some of the coaches that you've had on um, to help you because, you know, they've already, they've already done all of this work and they have this expertise in this area that they can pass on to you and no amount of you just randomly posting on social media here and there or showing up and doing some painting demo at some local art association. I don't know how many of those I did, you know, and and what was that leading to? You know, at some point I just, I just got to the point where I was like, where is this going? Where is that taking me? What's that leading to? I mean, I love showing up and painting for people and teaching. I've got a huge heart for teaching. You know, but at some point it's like, I, I can't keep doing this for a hundred dollars a pop, you know, and, and I, I don't get any students out of it. I don't get any sales out of it. You know, <laughs> so this whole idea of like, oh, it's exposure, you know, yeah. So, yeah, I was gonna say, it's just like <laughs> donating uh, paintings for charities or something. That's yeah. 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 Yeah, you get exposure, <laughs> you know, I was like, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know. I donate a lot of things now, but it's, it comes from not, not necessarily paintings. I I donate a lot of money, you know, to art organizations now and and other uh, charitable causes that I feel um, strongly about, not out of a sense of um, I need exposure, but Hey, I'm finally in this position where I can do this. And I feel really good about doing it. And I'm so happy and grateful that I'm in this place where, say, I can donate a $500 prize to Women Artists of the West or donate to their scholarship fund to help women artists get the education that they need, you know. Um, So it's there's nothing wrong necessarily with donating, but um, I want to do it from a place of like, okay, I'm in this this powerful position. I don't want to have to do it from a place of um of like well maybe this will lead to something you know or or uh yeah just like oh ho- hopefully maybe you're feeling guilted into doing it you know more gi- yeah giving back you know you're you're you know, giving back and and uh, helping promote and that, that that's that there's nothing wrong with that nothing wrong with that whatsoever it's uh too many times and uh, i I like one example in one of Gary Vaynerchuk's speeches. Uh, he talked about where uh, some people, they, they offer, you know, free courses, free webinars, but then in the process, then, uh, you know, to get the rest of it, 
you have to sign up and, and spend so many thousands of dollars. And, you, you know, it's just, and too many times that information that they're wanting to sell to you is you could obtain it from another source. You know, I said, had they used the approach of continuing with that aspect, you know, of, of the giving part of where it was not something that they can get back, but something that they can give, they would actually launch themselves even further, you know? And, and so that's a big thing too. To me, artists, I, I've encountered, you know, they get sucked on this road of, uh, well, that person's so important. Okay, I'm going to follow them and, and listen to them. And then they get frustrated when they don't make any progress. You know, they're, they're not taking the, uh, the uh, uh, right attitude. They're, they're using the entitlement attitude. You know, so, well, I've invested so much time and effort into this person. How come I didn't get anything back? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think you have to be careful that you you take your artwork and your business into your own hands. And there are people who can help you, you know, and yes, you want to use their help as, you know, as is needed. But yeah, you want to be very careful to never like hit your wagon you know, to somebody else too much. I mean, I have sort of a natural uh, need for independence and freedom and not being uh, controlled or manipulated by anybody. Um, so that's part of my stubbornness and, and perhaps part of why I'm, I'm not really a great social ladder climber or status status climber, whatever you want to call that, um, because I get a little bit too like, well, I don't want to do that, you know, <laughs> like, I want to do what I want to do. Um, so everybody's going to be a little bit different in that regard. But um, yeah, I think you do have to really take responsibility and, and as much control and really invest in the mastery both of your artwork and your art business simultaneously i mean obviously it's easier if you invest in the artwork first and get your skill level up as much as they can can you know as much as you can develop that because obviously the stronger your skill level you know it's going to be a little bit easier for you to be able to uh, then gain mastery on the business side because you're going to have the quality there whether that's through your teaching or through you know the quality of your work so i always recommend to students yes first focus on that but know that if you really really want to have a business you want to be a business owner uh you know which not everybody does and they need to know the difference you know it's not just about selling a painting here and there and winning an award here and there because that feels great but that's not a business you know absolutely so. that that follows we follow uh, a lot of the, the videos of uh, sergio gomez and he had a, in one of his um, videos he talked about he drew a triangle on the board and he talked about uh, how to reach, you know, the, the top level was the collectors, uh, high-end collectors. The middle level was, was the medium, you know, collectors. And then the bottom is, you know, pretty much everybody else that, you know, buys art once in a while and everything. And his emphasis, he said, before you even think about reaching that higher level, you have to work on your craft. You have – the art comes first. Practice develop your art, develop your skill, make really good art. Then through other processes of through social media and what and whatnot, you get it out there to the world. So it's very much in line with what you just said. You know, you gotta work on your on your art first. You know? and, and yeah. Yeah, because I think some people do put the other first, you know, and, and I'm not saying you can't have any success without having uh, your your craft <laughs> and, you know, being technically skilled because there's a lot of people who, you know, I don't think is very technically skilled, but they're, you know, they're successful in their art business. You yeah, know, they're, I, they're I more skilled. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're more skilled in their art business, you know, um, they're, they're better at marketing or, you know, so it, there's, it's two sides of the coin. And then you see other artists who are so 
like masterful in their work, yet they suck at the business side, you know, and it, you hate to see that, <laughs> you know, that, well, that's not right, but, um, you know, what well, it is what it is, so when you see these people who you feel like, well, they're not really, their work isn't really that great, but, you know, they've got a fantastic business model, you know, you, ha you need to learn from them, because, the fact that you have this really great skill set, you know, if you can also get good at this other skill set, well, then you've got the best of both worlds, you know, but, um, yeah. And now so, is the best time, now is the best time ever for artists. Look at all what's all available to us. There is all, there's no gate. I've always said this before many times. Diane and Costa hear me preaching about this. There is no gatekeeper whatsoever the only gatekeeper is yourself sitting back and keeping yourself and uh diane constance you want to add we've already wrapped this up you want to add any comments to this or well the gatekeeper comment i mean that it has the, the art world has changed quite a bit from when i graduated i mean there was such a limited um you couldn't it was so hard to make contacts and and i mean this is like pre-internet, <laughs> way pre-internet. <laughs> it was so hard back then trying to get contacts and getting people's names and trying to find galleries. And I mean, it, it was impossible unless you traveled a lot to go to all these different places to find the galleries because there wasn't any one place where you could look other than spending time in the library and going through all the different city phone books or something, you know. I mean, I used to do that, like, trying to find places to send my um, slides to. <laughs> yeah. yeah, in the back of the artist magazine, yeah. there used to be this great list of places where you could uh, send off for being in jury yeah, day. Nowadays, you don't have to do any of that. It's like, uh -uh. you know, everything's so available. On the yeah, I remember internet. watching a documentary of Andy Warhol, and he used to, when he was young, he used to carry his drawings around in a folder throughout New York City and go visiting different galleries, you know, and everything. And I'm thinking to myself, I have to do that today. There's no way. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm we didn't like carry portfolio, our portfolios around. It was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not too much of an introvert. I could not. Or a box of paintings. <laughs> a small <laughs> ones or whatever. Whatever, you know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, this is, thank you so much for joining me, folks. And you have been listening to the Artist Friends Podcast. This was episode 40 or March the 30th, 2020. And we've had our guest artist, Kelly Folsom here, and artist friends, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. Kelly, do you have anything you want to promote coming up here pretty soon? Or? Well, I don't know when this podcast is going to be released, but we have uh, my online class, Vital Art Sessions, is open for enrollment right now as we speak to people six. So that's the main thing. We just finished up a free five-day still life painting challenge, and people are still welcome to join that group and take advantage of the uh, challenges that were in that as well. Okay, I got to say, I took her. I took Kelly's challenge. <laughs> I had done still life in forever. <laughs> but, I know. I was surprised. I'm I'm like so I'm good. <laughs> She's a very good teacher. So I recommend anybody that's looking to. Um, you got a website for us, Kelly? Yeah, yeah. And let me just say, Diane, like she joined. You joined like the last day of the challenge, I think. <laughs> and she like knocked out this still life in a matter of no time. And I was like, "What? You're good at still life? What the heck?" <laughs> I had no idea. Okay. Um, but, yeah, you can find me at uh, artlifewithkelly.com, and all of the courses are available on that website. Uh, there's Vital Art Sessions, which only opens quarterly. Quarterly, The next uh, open enrollment will be July 1st, if you missed this one. And uh, plein air courses are on there. Find The Finding Your Artistic Voice course, um, which is a wonderful program. I love doing that program, which will happen in the fall, is on there as well. So, Fantastic. Okay. Well, let's end this episode. Thank you so much to our listeners for joining us for this March the 30th, 2020. And this is Clyde J.K. I saying goodbye to Diane, goodbye, Constance, and goodbye, Kelly. 
Goodbye, everyone. Bye. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Bye-bye, folks. Thanks for listening. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Brosnan and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Brosnan at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com If you'd like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com That's cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license. Thank you for listening.